Well, here we are. It's the 5th of August, once again. And we're on the beach waiting at the estuary for the pinks to come home. Last year they were in about three weeks ago. This year on the border of being late. Anxiety level climbs. But anyway, uh, if, if DFO's test fishery numbers are accurate, this is expected to be the largest run of pink salmon ever recorded. So, and of course, naturally, it's all because of us. Wizards are wise. They've learned to not tamper with certain things. I tend to have, uh, I'm told, a brain with a lot of big ideas in it, which of course most people uh, uh, sort of query, and uh, so they should. However, unless we have a vision that is expansionary and takes in a larger portrait of what we need to do in our area generally, and how we can ally ourselves with other people, we are just going to be not much. But. This is a story of many, many human beings, not one or two, and many of them are actually hidden and quietly hidden away, and they should all be acknowledged, because this is a unique group of human beings who have accomplished something that few have. Well, we do a lot of things around here. It's quite a menu. We not only are involved in restoring the river from the top of the mountain and on down, but we also go into the estuary and we go beyond the estuary into the sea. Hang on, Andy, you're going too fast for me. My group and I want to make a true and good difference, not just a pretend. So we do the in-river restoration. We put hatcheries up. We don't really care for them that much, but there was no alternative. You know, you're walking through these woods and it's idyllic and the river's trickling in the background. And then you get to this and there's a significant wow factor. I mean, everybody goes, wow, you know, you guys have really done something. As much as you need to breathe, I need to paint. And he keeps calling me, and I keep answering the call. Nice, ordinary, normal people, you see, who aren't on some sort of quest. They seem to be always on. Uh, they work during the daylight hours. So there are more of them than there's me. So therefore, I have to go with them, and I have to work with them during the daylight. And I have to come and work at night and then I paint quite often till two in the morning. And the paintings fit perfectly with my understanding of what art is. Art isn't a beautiful painting or a lovely sculpture or a book or a song. But for me, unless what I make changes the hearts and souls of my kind, I haven't made art. Ken has the kind of personality that just is vivacious and he does come up with great ideas and I don't think Owl Creek would be what it is today 
if it hadn't been for Ken and his ability to go out to the people to get funding and come up with creative ways to do funding and to go out to the media to make sure that our word gets out there. When I think of Ken Kirkby, I think of uh, Tilda the Hun. Well, he calls himself the Viking King, so I mean, what, what more can you say? <laughs>
and try to understand what the consequences might be for our actions today. If God practiced on all other things, and when he had achieved perfection, he made a fish. And in the same way as I told in the stories about the Inuit and their children, I think that they played the major role in getting Nunavut, who was children. And you know what? I think it's going to be children who actually get serious and fix the mess we've made. And if we can be in any way helpers and reminders, that's our job. <laughs>